Hey everyone, my name is Charlie and this is Charlie and welcome to the first instalment of Charlie and Charlie's Christmas Cracker, uh, the limited series in which you get to see Charlie and myself cracking up for Christmas. It is going to be full of seasonal smut and festive filth from the all-star Bavarian knee tremblers and if you get that joke then we can be friends. So, hello, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you How today? How are you doing today? Yes, I'm very well. <laughs> We're in a sink. Always. Yeah. So, yes. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. I'm yeah. very excited for the festivities to kick off. That's what I want. Very good. Probably more excited than I am with your very nice Christmas jumper. Um, I donated mine to the charity shop last year in the hopes of acquiring a new one, only for the one that I liked to sell on the first day that it was in the shop. Oh, oh um, Charlie! So now, now we're we're on the hunt. We're on the hunt. So far, all I've found is one with musical quotations on, and that's not very Christmassy at all. So we do have plans for these Christmas crackers, and this week in particular, you're going to get to see some jokes, some games, possible quiz questions, and even a Charlie and Charlie gift guide for those of you who might be struggling to find something for your loved ones. Charlie might be challenging me to something, and I might be challenging her to something as well, but you will get to find out more about that as the video progresses. I think where we should start is with our Christmas jokes, which might not be about Christmas, they're just a joke. But well, every good Christmas yeah. cracker has a joke in it, and I am looking forward to what Charlie has in store for me. What did Santa sing when he went down the chimney? I have absolutely no idea. Chest and nuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the sort of... Christmas cracker joke I was looking forward to. Um, <laughs> it didn't make me laugh. <laughs> my mine isn't that good. We should we should we should have perhaps saved my <laughs> so so um, to laugh. Because, <laughs> because mine is not that humorous at all. Um Man's it took me a long time to find that. I know. I remember you sending me the pictures and the stuff and trying to find the joke. Um, if you didn't know, Charlie would not send me the final joke that she's chosen. Mine is probably nowhere near as, <laughs> as that. It's cool. It's a joke that I saw on a Christian tea towel that was donated to the shop. And it was... How long did Cain hate his brother? How long did Cain hate his brother? As long as he was able. <laughs> That's quite good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we should we should have ended on a high, which was yours with that one. You're I... still funny though. You're still. We... <laughs> if we were looking for Christmas cracker joke wins, it was definitely yours in that moment. Uh, it's only because it's rude. <laughs> That's the reason yeah, why I, get, I, get, I get why it's funny. Um, <laughs> it's thinking about the, you know, like, the true meaning of Christmas, which is a brother murdering his own brother. And you're just over there, like... I think that represents our humour, actually, with I'm your joke and my joke. Yeah. I think that... Sure. I like a little bit of wordplay, and you just like burning someone's bollocks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're such a super hard though, because you're having the jokes at the beginning, it's gonna have got to try and put it in. Right. <laughs> so, that's so rude. <laughs> oh well that that last laugh cleared the lungs. Now right. we have a Christmas game for one another. Which oh, um, that's right, thing, yeah. it's, it's not necessarily a Christmas. I, I'm going to use the phrase Christmas a lot, and it's going to be nothing Christmassy at all. Um, but now, 
Bookish. It's a bookish game. It's a book. It's a bookish um, game. What we're gonna do is with our, with our weekly, we're gonna have a weekly bookish game, which you guys can all join in and guess. And um, like, and we we me and Charlie have got so so this week is childhood books, and we've got to pick. We, me and Charlie have each picked two books that we love and one book that we don't like, exactly. and the other Charlie has to pick, has to guess has which to one. Figure it, out. Yeah. Has to figure out which book they don't like, and you guys can in the in the description you can guess which one it is, and um, like if you want to put, join it in before we've like announced which one it is. Yes, we'll, I will watch the clock in this room, and we will give you fifteen seconds to guess which is the. What we want after we've um done our little premises. Yeah. yeah. So, would you like to go first, Charlie? So the first book I'm going to talk about is The Borrowers. Which, and the premise of The Borrowers are you, it's by Mary Norton. Are you familiar yeah. with it? Never read it, but obviously we got to see the film a lot in the 90s. Yeah. Beneath the kitchen floor is the world of The Borrowers. Pod and Homely Clock and their daughter Arietti in their tiny home matchboxes double as, a roomy, as roomy dresses and postage stamps hung on the walls like paintings. Whatever the clocks need, they simply borrow from the, the, the human beings who live above them. The Sweet Valley High saga, but is your are you, are you talking about Double Love? Yes. Elizabeth Wakefield really likes Todd Wilkins, and he likes her, but her twin sister Jessica Wakefield wants Todd for herself. Also, speculation is rampant about Mariana West, a lawyer in Mr. Wakefield's law firm. Is that the one? Yep, that's the one. There you saw okay. this. And then the third book is Heidi by Joanna Spiri. This is the last book. And it's yeah. at the age of five, little orphan Heidi is sent to live in the, um, with her, her grandfather in the Alps. Everyone in the village is afraid of him, but Heidi is fascinated by his long beard and bushy grey eyebrows. She loves her life in the mountains, playing in the sunshine, growing up amongst the goats and the birds. That kind of deal. So, yeah, those are the three books. And should we guess after? We're not going to guess now. Should we, should we both? You do tell me yours and then, yeah? And then, then, you can, then you'll have time to think about it. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'm I'm going to need the time to think. So yeah, that's fine. I will um, need time to think. And everyone can, like, everyone, you, anyone, you now, guys can now guess. Now you have the chance to guess which of those books was the one that Charlie disliked. So it's either, it, it's, it's um, The Borrowers, The Sweet Valley High Book, or Heidi. One of those I disliked, two of them I loved. I didn't, I'm, I'm still conflicted about this because I know the type of reader you are today, but I don't necessarily know what sort of reader you were when you were exactly. reading. Exactly, that is why it's difficult. Yes, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll think. So, That's what you tell me yours. We, we have Magnus Power Mouse by Dick King Smith. Yeah. Magnus is so big and so hungry that his parents have to find extra food for him. But perhaps pig fattening pills weren't quite the right thing, as Magnus just grows and grows and grows and becomes a real power mouse. As Magnus grows, so do the problems he faces. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have The Illustrated Mum by Jacqueline Wilson. Dolphin adores her mother. She's got wonderful clothes, bright hair and vivid tattoos all over her body. She definitely lives a colourful life. Dolphin's older sister, Star, also loves her, but it's beginning to wonder if staying with a mum whose temper can be as flashy as her body art is the best thing for the girls. And finally, Pearls of Lutra, which is the ninth Red Wall book by Brian Jacks. The tears of all oceans are missing. Six magnificent rose-coloured pearls, which inspire passion and greed in all who see them, have been stolen and passed from hand to hand, leaving a cryptic trail of death and deception in their wake. And now, Ublaz Madais, the evil emperor of a tropical isle, is determined to let no one stand in the way of his desperate attempts to claim the pearls as his own. At Redwall Abbey, a young hedgehog maid is equally determined to find the pearls first with the help of her friends, and she must succeed for the life of one she holds dear is in great danger. Hmm, that's interesting. So. <laughs> Some food for thought there. So you've got to say the titles again so that everyone can guess. Oh, them and so those three books were Magnus Power Mouse by Dick King Smith, the Illustrated Mum by Jacqueline Wilson and The Pearls of Lutra by Brian Jacks. Should we talk through our thought processes? Part of me is thinking that, 
you would like to react to you as well, which is not. But you would like the borrowers because it's a story of family and it's somewhat cozy. But I've never read it myself. I've only seen the film. So if you mm-hmm. see the film and then read it, it might not have been as good as the film to you. So you might not like that one. Um, Sweet Valley High, I think you're very close to your sisters. So reading a book where the sisters are pitted against each other somewhat and over a boy might not suit your sensibilities and might piss you off. And Heidi, I haven't read the book myself. Um, It was given to me when I was a child by, well, when a grandparent died. And so I think I never had felt the never felt spurred on to read that and it might have been too old-fashioned for you as a child so you might dislike that one Uh, (laughs) so I really don't know they're good thoughts all of those thoughts are really really good um so the first one the Dickens Smith one I just thought sounded really really Charlie-ish so I'm not really in any doubt about that one as much I feel like that was out of to me like out of them I'm probably gonna be wrong now and it's gonna be the wrong one I'm not gonna look at you I'm yeah I'm, I'm trying not I'm trying because to... I don't want to try and because if I see your face I can read you but I'm gonna try not to look at you um, um so yeah the Dickens Smith one I kind of feel like it's a very very Charlie book so I'm not like I'm not overly worried about that I feel like that's like a, a certain I feel like I'm fairly I'm like most sure about that book that you love you love it then there's the second book, which I know you like. Jack, you told me you liked Jacqueline Wilson when you were growing up. So that does put like doubt in my head because I know you loved her lots of her books when you were. I know you read lots of them, and I know you enjoyed lots of them. But that was the one as you were reading it. I was thinking this doesn't sound as much Charlie-ish. Right. But with the third one, the, the third book, the, it's like you said, it's the seventh in the series. Ninth in the series. The ninth, ninth in the series. So maybe you just got to that point and then just got bored of the series or something. Because the, the actual premise of that one, again, sounds quite you. Like, I would say that sounds quite you. Um, and it, the actual story sounds quite excitable and good. <clears throat> so I would, I think I know where I'm leaning towards, but... Okay. I will mm. give you 30 seconds, not 50. I'll be kind. We'll go countdown rules. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a lot of watching. 30 seconds. If things come to plan, you've had your 30 seconds. But I'm going to put in my guess. Yep, that's fine. I've been thinking about this. Yes. And I'm just going to go, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'll be sad about it, but it'll be the first time I've been wrong, and the the internet can... <laughs> oh, it's the same for me. I feel I'm like so I'm concerned. Because um, everyone says gonna... how great a friendship we are, this is going to show that we're shit friends, really. <laughs> I'm going to show each show everyone we don't know each other at all, but I'm going with the Sweet Valley High book. Yay! <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Really? Yes. You, you didn't I like that it. one. My sister had the books. So I watched the television show because we because obviously I'm a child of the '80s, like I said. Yeah. And the television show was on in the '80s or '90s. I can't really remember. And um, I did like the TV show, I think, but my sister had the books and she was obsessed with the books. Emily was obsessed with the books. And I remember trying to read them and I was like, snooze first, this is so fucking boring. <laughs> oh, okay then. Well, then, as you can see, I, I'm happy about that one. <laughs> so Whether you know me it. good, do I know you as well? Okay, my one, I'm going to say, is the Jacqueline Wilson one, which I'm really scared for because I think it could be the third one. It's either I don't think it's the first one. I feel like it's either the second or the third. Please tell me I'm right. It's, it's Jacqueline you Wilson. are right. Oh, it's Jacqueline Wilson. Right. It was the Jacqueline Wilson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's why I chose I chose books that I'd read from multiple, you know, I'd read multiple books by these writers. Um you were completely correct with what you said about Magnus Power Mouse. Um if anyone <laughs> the, the big story behind this book is that I worried that it didn't exist for the longest time and have been a fever dream of my childhood. Uh, <laughs> because 
I read this book when I was about seven or eight and I adored it and I have never been able to find it since. <laughs> um, oh, you even, I even bought a box set of Dick King Smith and I ended up gifting it to my niece because it didn't have that specific one in it. The illustrated mum, you were completely right with what you said. It was um, as much as I loved Jacqueline Wilson and I've talked before about how I would read and reread um, The Bed and Breakfast Star and Tracy Beaker. Um, I remember you saying about that. So. Yeah, this one I read once and it bored me. Um, I didn't like the subject matter and there, there was stuff going on in that storyline and in that book which I just felt like, well, this isn't funny like the others and I just... Yeah, I really didn't like that. And The Pearls of Lutra by Brian Jacks. Sorry, I talked about all three of mine. You talked about... No, I will talk about all three. I'll tell you about the other two in a second. The Pearls of Lutra by Brian Jacks was actually the first Red Wall book that I read, even though it was the oh. series. They had the animated TV show on when I was a child. And this was the book that they had at school. So I borrowed it from school. And it took me a while to read because it was quite a hefty book for Charlie to read then. But... Exactly what you said. It matched Charlie's taste, this adventure story, the animals. You um, sound just such a you book. <laughs> yeah, so that, you were completely correct. <laughs> That's still who I am today, still liking the magical adventure stories. Um, probably similarly to me in terms of like my taste, because the, so the Borrowers was obviously like, it's like a family story. And it was one of the first bigger books I remember reading. And um, and then I think after that, then the television show came out. I can't remember the order and things like that. But like yeah. you said, there was a television show. But I did read the book before it was a television show, and I just re- I just remember being captured by it. And my mum was really happy because it was one of the first bigger ones that I'd properly got into. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was that one. And Heidi, I still just I haven't actually reread the Borrowers though. I, I need to re- I need to buy that and reread that. But Heidi, I've got actually got a copy up on my shelves upstairs, and I just that was like one of my favorite favorite favorite. Um, but because I have read that as an adult, um, I read it like a couple of holidays, a couple of years ago, yeah. on holiday, and yeah, it's obviously about a child, about a little girl up in the mountains with her grand uh, granddad and with the little goats, and oh, oh it's just everything Charlie-ish. Well, I, I'm I'm glad that we um, <laughs> we've proved our friendship so far. <laughs> yeah, so far with with the childhood one, we we got childhood. We we know about childhood. Um, what what have we got down for next week? Did we say? So next week's is the classics, I think. So classics. We will see whether we know each other through classics next week because, <laughs> like, we do have this thing where we've liked as many as we've disliked, and it's going to be a case of trying to remember which ones we liked and which ones we didn't. Yeah, that'll be tricky, and it's kind of like because yeah, it's hot. It's 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 actually quite hard. But yeah. Yeah, let, me, let us know in the comments below if you guys picked correctly for both of ours or either of ours. I bet yeah. Emily's watching. Emily, if you're watching, I, bet, I wonder whether you've got it right. Yeah, if, if, uh, if Emily's watching, I hope she paused this video and she messaged us both. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to send her a message later to say, <laughs> I want her to pause it and I want her to send us a message while she's watching it. It'd be uh, shocking if she gets this wrong. I know. <laughs> Especially well, my one. Definitely, because she lived with you. <laughs> So for a gift guide, if you, as we said, uh, this is something just in case you happen to be struggling um, to think of what to acquire for a loved one or for a secret Santa or for someone you don't particularly care for, but you've got to buy them a gift anyway, just to save face. Uh, we've got them varying in prices. Yes, we've got varied prices. We've got a varied selection. The first one that I thought of was a puzzle book as an insomniac. I have tried many things over the years to help me sleep. Um, but one thing that I found has proven to be something of a long lasting gift are the puzzle books I've been given. So crossword puzzles and Sudoku puzzles. The Sudoku book that I have, I have currently had for three years and I'm not even halfway through because oh, I I love- every single day, it only cost the person who purchased it £2.95 and I just pick it up when... Either, well, either I'm wanting to try and put the brain to sleep 
or I'll forget that I've got it and then a few months down the line find it and decide that I'm just going to blitz through a few of them. So, yeah, I, I think that, one, you're going to help your, your acquaintance or your family member stave off um, dementia. That's uh, true. Another, they're getting to do a fun puzzle. So, I like a good I like a good word search puzzle. I'm really oh, into yes. word searches. Yeah, my sister loves a word search too. Yeah. My daughter had which I don't tell everybody if you guys watching. My daughter had um a word search homework the other day and um it was getting on, it was getting it was coming on to bedtime nearly, and she hadn't quite quite finished it yet because she was struggling with it. And so I just I just helped her. I just I had the best time. We were just sat together and I was just like, oh look, there's one. I, I got them really, really quickly. I don't care. It, doesn't matter. it wasn't like it was only like an extra it was, it was an extra part of the homework it wasn't the main part of the homework it's fine charlie parents are supposed to help their children with their homework i had my mother sew me an entire dress for my textiles class oh really yeah <laughs> that's she only got a c by the way she only got a c my one i've got my cheapest one i think i'm gonna put is bookmarks because you can get really all loads of different ones you can get because Obviously, as bookish people, bookmarks are like, they're such an easy thing. Though. You can get them very inexpensively. And I know, like, in terms of all the different types of readers in your life, you can just pers get personalised ones for things that they like. So I've got, if you can, yeah. You can see it's a Doctor Who. I've got Doctor, I've got every, and from this is one from Etsy. I'll, I'll send Charlie the links to put in the description um, of the Doctor. These are Doctor Who ones, and they, they have all the current Doctor's barring the David, you know, the very, very new one with yeah. David Tennant. I've got Jodie, up to Jodie Whittaker. So they have got them. And I've also got a drag, I've got a drag race one. Can you see? Oh, is oh, so that just reading is fundamental? Yes. Is that nice? Yeah. Reading is fundamental, report of. And yeah, you can just like, you can get, you can, depending on their interests, you can um, get various different ones, like I said. And I just think they're just, every, every single bookish person needs, you can never have too many bookmarks. So... And you can get, you can go, you can go more expensive with them if you want to get like a really nice leather one, or you can personalize them. You can, there's all different options of this. There are even, even some of the fun ones where I think a lot of us will have, book, bookish people will have seen it online where it's like the monster's claws peeking out of the book. And bookmarks a good one. Yes. You can never go wrong with a good bookmark. You can never have too many bookmarks. Never. Not if you're a bookish person. And it will save us from using pound notes as bookmarks too. The next, your next one, Charlie. I have are staples. 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 Specifically for the person who likes to build fences in your life. Um, these are very good for knocking chicken, chicken wire into a fence post and keeping it in place. Staples. Staples, yeah. They're round. Then... No, they're, they're, they're round with sp Sharp edges for knocking into wood. I, I know what you're talking about. Show me, send a picture now and send it to me so I can see. Farmers will be incredibly grateful for staples. Staples sound like a brilliant, brilliant. They're good. Well, good. I, I feel like you're doubting me in this moment, Charles. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying about. I don't know what kind of staples. I just feel like you meant the, you know, this I one. I don't mean that. I mean, stationery is always fantastic anyway. But I'm talking about building fences over here. I'm talking about keeping the lines. No one around here, here that I know of. That I'm going to see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really expensive gift. You said <laughs> some cheaper ones. No, that's good. No, it's good. Just say for no. That's good. Like you never know who who might need a staple. No, exactly. Well, so now, I, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to rearrange some things now because it seems like Charlie would not have been happy for the staples I was gonna gift her for Christmas. <laughs> It's just a bit random, but do you know what we do? Random. This is this is me and you. So if there are people that like, there might be someone that's watching that might think, "Oh my god, I didn't know that, that would be the perfect present for this person that I'm thinking of." Yes, there are people who like fencing. There are people who it's there might be. And you, if you're watching and you like fencing, comment below because you never know. I'm not talking like with your epes and everything. I'm talking about you going out into a field, a garden, your old hammer out. And you're knocking those staples in so that your sheep don't get out. You protect. Well, do you know what? If you're a person that has sheep and or um what uh farm things, and let us know in the comments below. We want to know. We want to hear from you. Yeah. Or if Would you, you really think that your your fa staple? someone your farm yeah, because the Grinch farm. over here wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm not a Grinch. I just I just I was like it it it, 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 it me. 
<laughs> I just it was so unexpected. <laughs> I should so try and pick your... an unexpected one too. I've got mine, none of mine are that unexpected, right? Do you want me to go on? The most unexpected thing I have is a paint by numbers because you know, like you could so you and also in terms of bookishly ones online, you can get Jane Austen ones that you can do paint paint by numbers for somebody. So if someone if you've got know someone that's a bit creative in your life and they um like it, like the Austens or the any of the classic books, there's quite a lot if you search you can find some of them so I found a Sherlock one and I found some Jane Austen ones and um yeah you can do paint by numbers with Jane Austen or paint by numbers with these so I'm sure there are other ones available but, yeah with that in mind <laughs> I'm going to go for something a bit more expensive from the top end of my list but because it seems almost fitting to the paint by numbers is the world of jigsaws I know that I showed you these when we were in crew um, but I got gifted the World of Shakespeare last year for Christmas. And that's a jigsaw. And uh, basically, you have the World of Shakespeare, Dickens, Agatha Christie. Oh, I got the Dickens one. I think you got the Dickens one, yeah. You do the jigsaw and then you can find the characters. Okay, get it. Let's see if I hold yes, it. In. There you go. Charlie can, Charlie can show us an example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so here we have the World of Charles Dickens. And... Um, Basically, it's different scenes and settings from Dickens' books, and then it gives you a list of characters to look out for within the jigsaw. And had the Shakespeare one, I've asked for others for this coming Christmas, and hopefully I get them and I get to completely take over the table for however long it takes me to finish it. But sometimes you can do them quite quickly. You're quite quick with the puzzle. It, it depends. If there's a lot going on in it, then I can usually get them done. But the Lion King one took me nearly two weeks. And we've also had a discussion, which you guys can contribute to below, that we only accept people that start with straight edges first. That's exactly right. That is true. Get the edges done first, otherwise... If you are a person that starts with the middle first... Well, actually, no, we're only joking. But you can well, yeah, let us know in the comments below. I, I, I have to kick my mother out of the house then, because, <laughs> because she's... <laughs> wherever she finds um, pieces that go together. No, well, honestly, if you can start with the middle first, then what, you impress me because I am I need the edges. Exactly, I need the you ball. You can't do it otherwise. Where everything's going. No, yeah, I, I struggle. No. I, um, yeah, I, had puzzles, I had puzzles on here as well, but I've got lots of other ones to pick from. So, um, okay, so what's your next one? I was going to say like a special edition of like your favourite book. So obviously like, obviously Folio do special editions of books. Um, which is a bit more pricey but you can also get like cheaper ones like penguin do there's like, loads, so many dishes especially of classics i'm talking about here yeah. um because we love our classics and um but even without that there are often in mean, waterstones do special editions of like the handmaid's tale and um you can get sprayed ones with sprayed edges so, um signed editions of, of someone's favorite book they're always like if you know a person has like an author they love, if you can find a signed edition for them, they, that you will make their day. Um, so that that's always a really good shout. But yeah, special editions, signed books. Um, I think they're a really nice, make a nice gift. Keeping on the bookish theme then, I have the poetry books, which are a poem for every day slash every night of the year. I just think if, if you know somebody who likes poetry, then these are... Good collections because I think that they have modern poets in as well as the classics. Um, okay. If somebody you know who might want to get into poetry, then this might be a good gateway for them to do that. They get in a poem every day as opposed to having collections so they can just read. I mean, they can even read them a bit piecemeal if you like. They don't have to read it every day, but it also does contribute to some regular reading as well. Yeah, and I what I do, I've got one of those and I am um, upstairs in my room. And I tick them off it, because it's poem, poem for every day. And I think you have two for every day then. Right. And um, I, I've got little t pencil ticks. I'm a kind of, oh, you can write in books. I know not every, people think I'm terrible for doing that. But I yeah, I do a little tick inside my book so I can, if I've not been consistent and read the whole year, I, I can see which ones I've read and which ones I haven't read. Yeah. And um, also with that, with those, um, with that collection, I think they, I, I don't know if they've got other ones, but I know they've also got a Shakespeare one. So um, if you've got anyone that loves Shakespeare, They've got a Shakespeare at one for every day. So, all right, then. What's your next thing? Um, I was gonna say a book sleeve. Which I'm gonna second. I'm gonna rub. It's trying to appear. If it doesn't appear, then 
<laughs> yeah, I'll just put a picture of it. We will show some book sleep. Yeah. There we go. She's just got a kind of fill it. <laughs> Basically, so you, it's a nice place to put. This is quite. A, I've got a large one. Um, and it's a way so you can just yeah you can just put your book in and when you're going out and about to the shops or if I'm like going when I was going to pick my daughter up I used to put my book in the book sleeve and stick it in the back of the car and I knew it would be okay <laughs> then you can just go I normally take a book with me pretty much everywhere I go I'm sure a lot of us do this um or my kindle um especially when you've got to go and have appointments and you don't know if you're going to be waiting for things yeah but yeah so then uh, having a book sleeve always really handy and they've got different price points you've got um etsy is, again there's another one that they sell so many different ones you can get different ones for different types of people so again if depending on their interests you can get like all different ones so yeah you get, only those you like alice in wonderland ones i mean there's every every anything you can think of yeah that's a good idea i've i've never had a book sleeve before but i am renowned for wrapping my books before i take them anywhere in one of the cotton what are they call like bags for life that sort of thing oh yeah I, yeah i know what you mean like uh, yeah. to protect them well to continue down this bookish theme and with what i said for the last one i was going to mention the faber poetry diary my friend joy who i mention often on here uses their diary and that's the one she gets every year because as well as having the general diary in i don't know whether it's for every day or whether it's just for every week it includes a poem by usually again a modern poet and I know that she uses this to to inform her knowledge of which poets are writing today but also if she is struggling to think of something to write reading one of the poems in there and writing response to it and using it as almost a trigger point yeah like an inspirational tool thank you as an inspirational tool uh to create something from that's really interesting that's really good I like that I like that a lot. I was going to say a bookish jumper so or a bookish t-shirt. So you can get, again, personalised ones or you can, I, like, I've, I've, I've got Emily ones before, um, like Jane Austen ones with slogans atop across or ones that say, like, currently reading. Like, jumpers are, like, they're, especially now with the weather so much colder and everyone's sort of, like, being careful with the heating bills, you can't go wrong with a jumper. Everyone will need more jumpers. So I think a good bookish jumper, with a, you can get, like I said, either anything like currently reading or depending on the book kind of books that they like or if you're really really like you can want to push the boat out you can get images put on get personalized ones if it's um if you if you can't find the image that you're looking for often like if you've got like an eye print like do you know what i mean like a, a t-shirt printing company that's nearby because yeah. we've got a few that are nearby you can get the image put onto the jumper of the thing that they are interested in so yeah and the saying that you want to have on there so yeah don't think you can go wrong with the bookish jumper. No, that's true. And it also lets everybody know what you're a fan of, what you like. It's a bit of fun. It'll cheer you up. I think those kinds of, if you, look for people, bookish people in your life that, um, yeah, it, and it shows thoughts. I think if you've done yeah. that and found one, especially one that's tailored to something that they enjoy, or even not bookish, it doesn't even have, this doesn't even have to be bookish. It can, you can have a personalised jumper with anything that they are interested in. I was thinking along the same lines when I wrote Umbrella down. Because I, you know, we live in a very rainy country. <laughs> so I found that you can get a lot of umbrellas that are somewhat related to a lot of different things that people can be fans of. And last night, whilst I was looking this up, discovered that you can even get umbrellas that as the rain hits them on the underside, it um, can change the colour and show images to the person who's walking. I did not know this, Charlie. I found these out last night, yeah. Send, uh, send me a link later. I will do. Um, and I That's amazing. That, I mean, a colour change in umbrella would be, you know, it, it might brighten up a somewhat dreary day. The ones that I found last night were Dinosaurs, Alice in Wonderland, and I'm pretty certain there was a Doctor Who one. I don't know whether that changed anything. I just think it might have been Doctor Who. Um, well, all three of those sound brilliant. I love a dinosaur. I know what I was going to say. A book, sub a book subscription. This is a little bit more expensive on the expensive end. But... Yeah. Um, Again, bookish, because this is a lot of mine I'll focus on. Um, there are loads and loads of book subscription services out there, that ranging in prices. And again, links in the description, because Charlie's been put everything in the description. Yeah. My husband, for my 40th birthday, so a couple of years ago, no, not, couple, not, last, not this year's birthday, last year's birthday, um, he got me a bookish subscription to, book, to Bookishly. 
this was one of the additions that came. I had 90, it was 1984 box and it had, in, and inside the box, I think there was like, you have like, there was like, like teas and like special bookmarks and like put cards and then um, yeah, loads and loads of different like gear comes comes in the boxes and they're just so much fun. And, it, and every single month it's like having an extra present. So it's not, it's not, it's like the present that keeps on giving. And they're just they're just so much fun. Like I said, every single I I think he got me um a six month subscription, and so I got six boxes. And yeah, they were just every single every single time I got them, it just it was just so much fun. And like everyone in the house enjoyed looking and seeing what ones yeah. I got. So, yeah, yeah, they're a bit more pricey, but they you don't always have to get the. You can get like you can just buy one subscription, or you could buy up like three months. Or and like I said, there's all different types of ones. I don't have anything to bounce off that with, so I'm just going to go back to the cheaper end of the spectrum oh, that's fine, that's fine. and try and pronounce it the way that Charlie pronounces it, even though I don't pronounce it this way, which is, Charlie says Lieberkuchen, ah. and Kuchen, uh, but specifically the Nerdbringer. Uh, Lieber- isn't it Lieberkuchen? How do you say it? I, I, I've been saying Lebkuchen. You say Lieberkuchen sometimes. I Lieber- don't know. We are looking at how to pronounce the name of these honey-sweetened German cake molded cookies or bar cookies that have become part of Germany's Christmas traditions. How do you go about pronouncing it? Lebkuchen. 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 Pretty straightforward once you know. Lebkuchen cookies. Did you get it? Was this any helpful? It's a very, very nice German or Austrian, it's a European gingerbread. And I was planning on gifting myself the Fortnum and Mason's very expensive version of this. Uh, and I was in Waitrose and happened to find it for a lot cheaper than it would have cost me from Fortnum and Mason. And so I acquired it. I have now acquired my second box. It's either £2.50 or £3.50, but it is the best Lebkuchen, 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 that I have ever <laughs> tasted. Uh, it has a variety in there. And have for... you got chocolate-coated ones, or are they just some plain ones? or a bit? Of so you've got two chocolate-coated ones. you got two that just had icing sugar, and then you had two plain ones. But... Amelia will know about all this, I'm sure, because she comes as she hey. comes Ah. Fantastic, the best. My mother brought them from Lidl afterwards, and it just didn't matter because they did not match these ones. I know it's Waitrose. I know it's a bit pricey. It's a lot to pay for five or six pieces of German gingerbread. But take so, a picture of the box and send it to me on a side note, Charlie, because then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go and have a look. I will do. <laughs> I love a good <laughs> or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, to a person who's been off sugar for a few years, who so only allows himself the things that he really likes, this was a very... Yeah, you're really strict. Yeah, ...to myself. I want to, on a side note, me and Charlie have already been talking about this, I'm going to probably do some baking and try and bake some leaves. I said this to you before. Yeah, I'm going to try yeah, and bake yeah. some. And if, if I do, I might put it in like a vlog and then show you guys. And then if, we can, I can share the recipe with you guys that way. If I find one that I like. Sell, but that's very nice to look forward to. So, uh, and also, if you... Going on those... On that note... Handmade, I don't know if everyone's a bit more careful about germs and by making things for people, but um, yeah, like handmade, like gifts, like hand home baked gifts for people that you're close, especially your close friends. I wouldn't recommend it for people that you're not as close with, but um, yeah, they like Lieber, Lieberkush, that, that they make fantastic gifts, especially if you did them in shapes or something, yeah, yeah, and like ice them, or you could do like, like I said, with chocolates, but yeah, bookish jewelry. Oh. Yes, that's a good idea. Because you can get like Alice in one, like again, Alice in Wonderland, or like I know there's all different, all different, all different types of different jewelry earrings, um, and like themed, themed around, yeah, and like for necklaces, you can get like different ones for different, again, brooches. Yes, brooches, ba- badges. Things. You can get a, there's a million badges out there, a really million are. different badges. And and that's so quite that's- interesting. It's like it can be an obscure reference as well, but the person who knows it very much appreciates that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I can bounce off that one with a literary candle. Oh, I've got that on my list. Good shout. (laughs) 
you can uh, again assorted scents and aromas we've got stories about candles we, we, tell them do have, we do have a few stories about candles i've seen some that supposedly smell like narnia uh, you can get them that just smell like bookshops uh, i think sometimes authors have been specific about certain aromas within their books so then people have gone out and made candles based on those scents um, that's amazing that make an amazing gift but yeah, you, they can be a bit pricey, but again, various price points for these literary candles. So yeah. the next one I've got is bookish games or bookish theme games. So like if, you, if you're like an Agatha Christie lover or Sherlock again, there's all different games you can get. So we've got, I know Charlie knows this one. Uh, T, do you know this one? Yeah, Baker, yeah you sent me a picture. Yeah. yeah. And this, is, um, this one's brilliant. I play this with my friends quite regularly. And it's yeah, this is a co-op game, and you can go around and play detective. And then this one is called Agatha Christie's Death on the Cards, and it's got um ca characters from Agatha Christie in it. And you play together, and then you've got to work out. So one of you is like you each different characters, and you've got to work out which of you did the did the crime. Oh, so it's so a bit like Clue uh, then. I guess, no, but yeah, but. It's, one of you is like has, has, is lying. You've got to lie and be like the. Oh, it's, okay. like, it's, like, it's like you know, blink murder that kind of thing, but it's in card form. So you've got to oh, work out who the murderer is, and then, um, it, and it's quite. It, this is really, really, really fun, and it's it can cause a lot of arguments, but in a fun way. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been wondering about that one when I saw it. It's uh, really, really fun. I recommend it. So we have <laughs> your next one. I say I was going to say Bluetooth headphones. Oh my god, they're so handy. Be exactly because. Um, not just for readers, you know, uh, you can listen to music on the podcasts, your radio stations, you can listen to on this. I specifically use mine a lot for audio books. Um, but when you're they, going around cleaning and... Yeah, yeah, they are very handy walking um, when you're driving, although perhaps not recommended. Yeah, a Bluetooth headphone, you can get them, again, various prices. I got mine for about £20 in a sale once. Um, it all depends on what you need them for. And if you're just listening to an audio book, I found that the cheaper ones are perfectly fine. Well, there you go. Yeah, perfect. I love mine. I've got ones that I have to have the string, the one with the string to connect them because otherwise I'd lose them because, you know, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> um, I've also got... This is called... It's a page holder. I think I've shown oh, this. Oh, yes, I've seen these. This is what I got for my birthday. And I, I'm going to try and... I'll take a picture. Maybe. Can you see? It's got my name on it. it I can there? see. Yeah, so and my friend, this is what my friend got for my birthday. And that anyway, you put it in your book, and it you help it helps you hold the page open, your book open. So it's, it's and you can get them like I said, personally. You can see they're personalised, and there's all different ones available. And yeah, very nice. And it come, this one came in a little pouch. My final one is hot chocolate. Oh my god, that's brilliant! Specifically, Wittar's hot chocolate. And only because last night I found out that they do a gingerbread hot chocolate. And if you know me, you know, I really like gingerbread. They do a gingerbread hot chocolate? Yeah. How did I not yeah. see this? Well, they do an assortment of flavours. So if you know a flavour that somebody likes, uh, then just get them a posher hot chocolate just for the festive season. I've got cookies and cream. I got them there you go. See, Charlie agrees. <laughs> and the final one I'm going to finish on is, um, I'm going to say, like, put some books that were, like, by people that we like on this internet um specifically i've got i'm gonna start with so eric Carl anderson's little gifty book things that tries oh, yeah, yeah they make amazing christmas presents and we are very encouraging of spreading the love for booktubers and speaking yeah. of booktubers we'll finish with charlie's books because they make amazing christmas gifts and we've got them all around me that's very kind i didn't i didn't think we were going to mention doris again but i don't mind yeah. doris here. can't not mention doris Obviously, like I said, links to Charlie's books in the description. And should we say about the giveaway? This is a perfect, right. Yes. If you guys don't know, there's um, a giveaway going on on Charlie's channel. Yes, because this is, no, this yes, is your channel. Is, this is your channel. Um, so the giveaway is hosted by Charlie and I um, for the literally Doris read along slash tag. Um, we are holding a giveaway of all four of the Our Doris books. Our Doris, indisputably Doris, Doris Ahoy, and Royally Doris. And this giveaway is running until the 22nd of December when we will be Very announcing the winner in our live show on this channel. And we thought that if you've made it this far into this video, 
it would be nice to give you the chance Bonus the opportunity. to gain Which is what we're going to do every single week at various different points in our next obviously not in the live video but up to the live video and um, we'll give you at different points in the, the video we'll give you a secret code word to put in the description and then we'll know that you want to yeah so this um this means you've got code word or an emoji should we do an emoji or a code word i was thinking an emoji for this week um, but it means that you could gain an extra three entries Entry. giveaway. You if you want to make your first place. entry, go back to our announcement video on my channel, which I'll leave a link to in the description for one entry. But for your extra entry, and Days. I will want an entry on that original video as well, where you just need yes, to come to your address. Um, then you've got to be subscribed to both me and Charlie. That's the rule for the giveaway. So for this extra entry into the giveaway you need to be subscribed to both my channel and charlie's channel you need to go to the original announcement video and express your intention to be entered into the giveaway but also if you've already done all that on this video i need you to comment with a snowman emoji a snowman emoji that's a good one that's <laughs> all we need I don't need you to say on this video that you're entering the giveaway, just the snowman emoji. And your name will be put in, as, along with, if, as long as you've got your first entry. entry. Into our giveaway for the opportunity to win all four of those books. Yeah, and join in the, if you, if you, if you, whatever happens, if you still want to interested in joining in, in the read along next year, again, that's link all the description. Um, all the, all the all links to my books are in the description anyway. And um, if you go to that original announcement video, you can find the dates and more information about the read -along. Read -along. Yeah, that's important. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty and who's nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. For well, the next portion of this video, I thought that we might talk about what we are reading this week as we approach the festive season. So what are you currently up to when it comes to your reading, Charlie? And only I was had been reading like a million different books, but currently I'm down to one book and I'm down to What a Mother Loves, What a Mother's Love Don't Teach You. And I'm listening to this on the audiobook and also physically reading it because it's got like the Jamaican dialect in it, and I just I, as soon as I started reading, I was like, I feel like I'd get more out of it if I listened to the audio book. And so I waited. So I did. So I did. And yes, it's really, I'm about, I've read, so far I've read 80 pages. Or listened oh, great. To so at 18 years old, Dinah's basically got pregnant and given birth. And she's given her, ba her baby, she gave her baby away at that age. And then it's sort of fast forwarding in time. And um, she's in like... She's working somewhere and she spots a boy, someone who she thinks is the boy. She thinks... Right, I see. She spots somebody yeah. who she thinks is that baby. And um, basically, it's sort of the book is sort of ensues from there. And it's obviously about the, the mother's relationship and the things that have happened in the past. Obviously, you're going back in time. And yeah, it's just really, really good. And it's just really compelling. And I can tell that there's a lot of heart to this book already in the 80 pages I've read. It's just, there's already quite a lot of heart to it. And also a little bit of humour, but yeah, this is just really, really lovely. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. That's what I'm currently oh. reading. So I'm doing something similar with the book I'm currently reading in that I'm um, listening to the audiobook as well. I don't, yeah, it's not going to show up on screen because it's green. <laughs> um, and that is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. And I'm not going to finish this by the end of the month like I'd hoped, but I do want to finish both this and the final Bar Sitcha book by the end of the year and um basically it's took listening to the audiobook for me to properly get into this one i find it a lot more dense and philosophical than i found any of the other barsetshire books um but i'm also finding more strength in the prose it's almost like anthony trollope this time round has a very sure idea of what he wants to write about and I'm enjoying that, but I do find that I need to listen to the audiobook more than I need to read it physically, which happens sometimes. I think that... It should be classics, like we've said this before, haven't we? Yeah, with, with, with classics, sometimes it takes that to get the voice properly in your head, um, but also 
I'm finding that maybe because of how busy I am, maybe everything that I've got going on at the moment, just listening to it is making me take in more than reading it has been. Um, also, other things have been getting in the way, namely Ali Smith's book, There But For That, um, which oh. I was reading last week. And I just find this so fast. And the it's got a lot of the Ali Smith tropes in it, you know, such as the wordplay and all that sort of thing. Um, but because I read her quite quickly, I find myself navigating towards that more than I find myself going towards the trollop. I can um, understand. Especially when you've read quite like the chunky, because we read you did Victober, didn't you? As well, so you read I, I did Victober, and I think that um, I did quite a lot of chunky books. I, so yeah, I I read two books that I really didn't like, so I just I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to head towards books that I think that I'm going to enjoy at the moment more than um, <laughs> anything else. Continuing my reread of the Christmas Chronicles by Nigel Slater, but that goes on till the end of the year. And can I also with that book? Can you because I haven't started it at the correct time because I have it on my um audio subscription. And um, can I dip in from like now? So then I just later, yes, yeah, no, that's fine. You, you don't like when I first read it, I didn't know it was going to start in November, I thought it started yeah. in December. So I, I read the book in December the first time I read it. It's only um over the last two years that I've started reading it. Is it like a calendar? It's got like the dates and then you just... Yeah, it has it has the dates in it. It's also, you, you don't have to listen to them based on the date. It's just something I do because I know how busy I get at this time of year. So I like having something short to just go to where it can be like five to ten pages to read in that day. And that's it's just not reminded me. Time. Yeah, that's just reminded me another one I'm reading. You can put it on screen of the, um, you know, the, the short story collection that I've, I've said about. Oh, yeah. Or like the not horror one, the which ghostly, one? which is edited yeah, by Audrey Niffenegger, which is ghost stories. Yes, um, so you can put that on screen. It's yeah. Very nicely helps me to move on to the haunting season, which is a collection of um, short stories by authors writing today, and the last two have been Christmas stories. Did you um, find that in the charity shop as well? Or did you buy? I did find it in the charity shop. Yeah. No, which uh, is a bargain. Yeah, it it, it cost me two pounds. <laughs> uh, and I got it because it's got a few of my favourite writers in and did I read the Jess Kid one um, yes I think I, I just read the Jess Kid story which was called Lily Wilt but before I'm reading one of these every Sunday in the run to Christmas and uh, this I was a bit behind and I read um, one called The Eel Singers by Natasha Pulley and that is a sequel to both The Watchmaker of Hillary Street and the most recent book in that. And I really enjoyed that story. So when I was at work yesterday, I went across to the library to get this one because I tried reading it a few years ago and I couldn't really get into it. But having read that short story, I really want to read more with the characters now. I um, said that as well. I said I tried, I've started, I tried to start reading the watchmaker of Feather Goose and I just I DNF'd it. Well um after reading the short story and seeing where the relationships are going to go within this short story now I want to see how that happens. Um, it, takes your it has done yet so Ooh, shall I talk about one of my DNFs? Oh yes talk about a DNF. Let's hear that. I suspect that I started that I told Charlie I was going to start and it's the um Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Gino Dawson. Oh yes. And um I started listening to it and I was I was enjoying it. like I was I told you I was enjoying it to start with but I think I just got bored I think I was like three hours in and I realized I was just so bored by it it sounds really horrible and I don't know whether it's like the audio narrator is Nicola Coolan, which I love her narration actually yeah. I do I, I know you didn't get on with it as well but I loved her narration so well I don't think it was that I just think like the story just I felt like I just I wasn't as interested in listening to it and I felt like I was wasting my time Oh, so I do love Gino Dawson's other books. I love her books. Like the one I read, I read um, her family nar narrative. Do you know the name of it? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, no, I, um, the, I, I read it for Patreon Book Club last year. Um, I've only read the gender games. It was the one that, uh, so uh, Stay Another Day, but Gino Dawson, I read it for Lauren in the Books' Christmas Patreon last year. And it was, I loved reading that. It was a really good book. Um, and that's like about a family. And 
I highly recommend that. That's a really good Christmassy book, but it's also kind of like, like I said, family. And I, in in Her Majesty Cot's Coven, there's um, some really good topics discussed to do with, like they said about pronouns and other things in it. Like it's kind of like stuff that's addressed, but obviously like in a really cla- casual sort of clever way um, as she does do. So actually it's not, I think it's just the wrong time with that book, with the, that book, but yeah, I just wasn't getting into it. And so I DNF'd it, but again. Yeah, I, I started that. I listened to the sample on Audible, but I think that that's one definitely that I'll have to try and read. Physically. I think maybe that's the same for me, actually. And I'm going to get, I'm going to try and get it from the library because... I might do that. I say this without being rude to any um, narrators, but sometimes I find that popular actors don't make the best readers. You'll find this on Audible a few times. I've said it with Juliet Stevenson's narration of North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Sometimes there's just a little too much acting in there. And sometimes for me, the voice that is reading the book does not match with the narrator within the text. And so I think that sometimes it's just, yeah, yeah the narrator can, like you say, make or break it. But it doesn't, like, I do think that she's a good narrator. And Nicola Coolin is obviously a good narrator, but. For me personally, there was something about it between the story and the narrator. I just couldn't get into it. So, and the only yeah. way I could tell if it was the story, or I, I feel like I'd be to go to the physical book. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to check it. And it's going to be in a series as well, which does. That's another thing that makes me like more likely to DNF because I'm like, well, it's not yeah. just this. It's like a it's a series of books. I understand so, that because um, so many people, so many times, people have said to me about a series to wait until you get to this book in the series and that's when things really start moving I'm not reading five books I'm not reading subpar books subpar I'm not reading five subpar books just to get to the one that's good that's it yeah so that's it. so you are reading anything else um no that's it. that's everything that I'm reading okay. uh, so we do a pile of books then books. One of the reasons that Charlie and I were talking about what books we are currently reading and have been reading is because we are now at a challenge. This is the Challenge Charlie moment of the week. And throughout the month of December, we have decided that each week we will send one another a stack of books and we allow the other Charlie to pick which book we are going to be reading this week. The power, the power, the Charlie, the Charlie's going to have power <laughs> over each other. <laughs> the Charlies have got power over one another's reading of the week. And I am currently hoping that Charlie is going to be decidedly kind to me. Um, I'm hoping that I have been kind to her with what I have chosen. But would you like to show which books you sent me pictures of this week, Charlie? Yes. Right. I've got uh, The Happy Prince and Other Stories by Oscar Wilde. This was on my Victober TBR. No, it wasn't, actually. I bought it during October with the plan to read it in October. Yeah. I've got Orlando by Virginia Woolf, which is a little, would be a still, even though it's short, it would still be a little bit of a challenge if Charlie picked it because yeah. um, it's a classic. And obviously sometimes I get on with Virginia Woolf and sometimes I don't, but I do want to read this anyway at some point. Obviously, as with all of these. I've got Zori by Laird Hunt, which was on the list of books I told that I wanted to read. These are all books, like I said, I want to read. Yeah. Foster by Claire Keegan. I loved um, more things like oh. these by Claire Keegan. That's the reason for that. I've got Selected Poems by Mick Imler. This is one me and Charlie bought together. When, no. Yeah, Charlie six- found it. Yeah. yeah. Charlie found it in the charity shop and rejected it, so I nabbed it. <laughs> and then I've got John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. I love John Steinbeck. Quite short. I've got Saltwater by Jessica Andrews because I am I love Jessica Andrews and it's one I want to get to, as with all of these. American Fever is one I picked up for my birthday, but this is by De E. Aziz Amna. Then I've got Honor, which is a little bit bigger, but it's how many pages of it? 300 pages by, uh, so it's Honor by Thriti Amraga. And we've got Ginger and Me by Alyssa Swab. And I don't know if that's how you say it, but that is the last book. And I think this is, again, a bit more chunkier. It's 350 pages. Yeah. Oh. 
Well, that's okay. It's okay. It doesn't matter. No, they're not, no, it doesn't. I, I'm happy to read any of them. Like these are all ones I want to read. Or any, any single, any one of these, I'll be happy to. So you can stick with whatever you want to read. So those are the, my choices for Charlie to pick from. So Charlie's got to pick one of those books, and then you show me yours, and then we'll say what. You don't want to choose now. No, you tell me. You say yours. Okay. To, so and then we'll so the yours. books that I chose, and these are in no particular order were The Night Ship by Jess Kidd. Really like Jess Kidd as a writer. Um, An Ordinary Wonder by Buki Papillon. And I put this on here because Charlie gave me this book over a year ago and I still haven't read it. Then I have Way of the Argosy by Sebastian de Castel, which is a spin-off series from the Spell Slinger series for following Ferius Parfax. And I own it. <laughs> I just completely forget that I have it all the time. Then we have Wind Volume 2 um, by James Tinian IV and Michael Dialinas. Uh, then I have Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Walker. Yeah. I have Orthea by Joanne M. Harris, which I keep forgetting again that I own this. And it seems I've owned this for quite a while now. We have Blood on Snow by Yo Nesbo, and I'm sorry, I don't know who translated this one. We have Endless Night by Agatha Christie, The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, and The Offing by Benjamin Myers. You can, do you want to say your process? Say which one you picked, and then, no, do you want to say your process, and then, like, and then, did my, you have a my, process? My, my, pro- my, process, process. my process for picking your books. Yeah, and uh, then say which one you picked. So, like, say, like, what you okay. would pick, and then so, say which one you picked. No, I, I honestly, I'm happy to read any of them. Any so, of those books. As soon as I looked at the list, I knew which book I wanted you to read, basically. And as soon as I saw it, I felt incredibly mean as well. Um, well I know which one you're going to pick. I'm gonna, I would almost do a punt of which one you're going to pick. And I actually, <laughs> if, I'm going to tell you now a, a story about it. If you do pick the one I think you're going to pick, which I don't mind because I'm happy to read any of them, I nearly started listening to the audio book of this this morning. I was so sure you are going to pick it. Do you want to tell me which book it is? And I will tell you my process then. So which book do you think it is? Ginger and Me. It is. Oh my God, I swear to God. I swear. <laughs> I love all those books. I swear I'm psychic. Um, Look, I don't, I'll show you. I don't know what um, So my whole thinking was like, I was looking at the books and I was like, I know that Charlie likes Claire Keegan and Foster's rather short and she could, you know, she could get it done like that. Um, <laughs> I saw Zori and I was like thinking over that. And I kind of re-row and I was like, I don't. I was like, we're heading into December, and as much as I like Steinbeck, Canary Row just isn't up there for me. And I was like, I'm not going to inflict that on her. That Orlando, Virginia Woolf, love Virginia Woolf when I read Mrs. Dalloway, but Orlando is just. It could be too dense. It could be too um, much of a thinker. Too much of a thinker at the moment, and I was just. <laughs> just and me, supposedly about a friendship, and I was just like, I like. There's a whole sort of friendship going on here, I hope. And I was just like, yes, it's got to be Ginger and me. As soon as I saw the pictures come in, I was like, that's the book. And um, yeah. I need you to pick that. I don't know why. It's so weird. I literally downloaded it on script this morning and I was bet I, I said to Richard, I said, I bet Charlie, I said I, was gonna, I had the plan, I was gonna listen to it and start listening because I needed a supermarket book. So when I go to the supermarket, I listen to the audio, I have an audio book. So then I'm not um, even though I didn't actually do it this morning. So anyway, that was the one I downloaded it last night because I was like, <laughs> I bet Charlie's going to pick this one. Honestly, well, I swear. Weirdly enough, I actually have absolutely no idea what book you would pick for me. Honestly, I, I was looking at the list. I was like... My um, thinking of this was, I was like, there was like three I had it shortlisted to. Okay. Which was, even though really I was like, I kind of knew straight away, but um, I was like three, I was like thinking, I actually did think about it. I bet you'll know which one I'm going to pick as well. I bet you, I I bet you will. I'm, I'm looking Probably at like, the like, I have no idea. You have no idea? Okay. Absolutely none. I can't think at all what you would have gone with. Okay. So I was, I'd say Agatha Christie was one of the ones I was like, okay, right. right. This could be a choice because I know you like Agatha Christie. And Christie is quite, we both said, but Christie is quite this. December, you know, I feel like it's quite yeah, a good right. December. Thing. Private Christmas we've talked about before, yeah. Yeah, then you've got the offing by Benjamin Myers because I feel like, again, it's like it's landscapey. It's and it's meant to be like beautiful writing. I thought it would be kind of a staple, like a like a kind of safe choice. I would say I did think about Jess Kidd as well. That was another one. 
another one. But in the end, I've gone with wind, the second wind one. Because I just was like... <laughs> you didn't think it would be that at all. You didn't! <laughs> no. Honestly, I mean... Because um, I thought that's quite an easy read. It's graphic novel, isn't it? It is, yeah. You, no, you, you definitely know me more than I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... Um, when, when I came... <laughs> When I came to choose the books, my entire thinking about choosing them was variety. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you have variety in yours as well. I was like, well... That wasn't on purpose. My variety is like, not on purpose. Um, <laughs> and I was just thinking, well, I'll throw Christy in there because I know that you said about reading the Tommy and Tuppence book when we spoke. Um, I threw in a book that I bought when we were together. I threw in a book you bought me and then like got some writers in there that I've read before. What you bought when we were together? The Miss Pettigrew one. It was the first one I bought when we were together. Oh, of course it was. And That's why we were excited because we thought you yeah. saw it. Sorry. Well, um, oh, yeah. Well, out, yeah. I, I'm incredibly grateful for you for picking to you for picking wind because you know how busy, busy. My schedule is for the next week, and I hope you don't mind me choosing Ginger and me <laughs> <laughs> because it no, wasn't. I because, just knew you were going to pick it. It wasn't because I was thinking of being mean and thinking to have you read the biggest book you'd sent. It's just as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's the one. And that is on my list of, because I've got me and Charlie did, Charlie's going to link in the description. Yeah. Um, it's the, we like, books. Was it the end of the year or nothing? Yeah, and then we added a question. Yeah. I said, which books I have to read by the end of the year. And I think Ginger and Me, do I say Ginger and Me is the one I have to read? I, I don't feel as bad knowing that you wanted to read this by the end of the year anyway. What books would you pick? Out of those lists, what books would you have picked? Say in the description which books you would have picked for the other Charlie. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. Invol involving people like Charlie always likes to do. Yeah, what, what books would you have chosen for Charlie to read or for me to read from the list that we gave one another? Who have yourself a merry little Christmas for me, for a book that I'm going to recommend this week is one that I am currently reading, and that is The Haunting Season. I'm four stories in. There's only eight stories in there. I'm, As I say, I'm reading one each week in the roll-up to Christmas, and it's a nice way to spend a Sunday afternoon because they're only about 30 to 40 pages each. I don't know what it is about the stories in there, but they are so evocative of winter and it's a great way to get to know some writers who are writing in this genre, uh, you know, these days. So, yeah, I'm going to recommend The Haunting Season. Ghostly Tales for Long Winter Nights, and I definitely agree with that. I've yet to find a story that I've disliked. And this is including writers I've read before whose work I didn't necessarily care for when I read it. So it's proven quite a good book for me. I've got this one upstairs, but I'm not going to, because we've got... Yeah, I'll put a picture on the screen anyway. Yeah, um, and it's the Carol Ann Duffy Christmas poems. I don't know if you can... Oh, I... Yes. I got one of hers to read um, later in December. Which... It's the bind-up one. I do want to get the... She's got a newer one out as well, um, which I did yeah, see in the book workshop. I don't know why I didn't buy it. But anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Carol, you can never go wrong with Carol Ann Duffy's poems. And like, like you said, even if you just read one of those, like, I think there's like four or five in that collection I don't remember exactly but um yeah they're just so brilliant and they're just so they're so creative and so fun and um they're just very perfect for this time of year so that's the book that I'm going to recommend I'll be digging it out myself I'm going to go for a film now <laughs> um don't say the thing I want to say <laughs> well, okay well you say yours first no you can say it okay um if we both have the same one we just we'll leave it at that in terms of film, so I tend to struggle with films, and considering we're only in November, <laughs> uh, the end of November, though, actually, when you guys are watching it, it's the first. Yes, it's going to be the first of December when this goes out. But the film that I'm going to mention is Home Alone Two. I love that one, uh, and I—that's my favorite of the Home Alone. I don't know why. Like this, the sequel for me is much better than the first film. I, I adore them both as Christmas traditions. What I, what I despise now <laughs> is just is knowing how old this film is and how long it's been out. 
And I think I'm the same age as this film. I think I watched this in the cinema. I think this was my when it's either my first cinema movie. It was like one of the early Doors ones. I'm fairly certain it's one of the first ones I watched in the cinema. Anyway. Um, but my dad put this on a fortnight ago. It's available online to watch. But for whatever reason, it's one of those that even when it's on the telly, if we're halfway, if it's halfway through, if it's nearly finished, we still just watch the end of it. And I don't know, there's just a lot of Christmas nostalgia that comes from this film for me. That's like almost like a tra- 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 Christmas tradition. Oh, yes. So what's... The one that I spoke to you about literally at the weekend, me and Charlie both watched it at the same day, is the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. Yes. This is an amazing Christmas special. It really um, is. And it, like it h- hits all of the Christmas notes and it's it has like at the, in- the beginning of the... Um, so this is from the Guardians of the Galaxy. The, yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. And it's it, you come in and um, they're sort of like gathered around and they start by, with a funny song. The song at the beginning is just hilarious. The very first song. It really is. I, I literally I, was laughing I, so much. Part of me thinks that that's definitely going to be like a not just a viral hit. I would not be surprised if we saw that in the charts. I'm going to re-listen to it. I'm going to find the song and re-listen to it anyway. I'm and hoping it's online. It's just yeah. so funny. There were so many things about it. I was like, I, ne- I nearly like messaged you every five seconds with the lyrics that just made me laugh anyway. Because me and Charlie do that but anyway. But anyway. Um, <laughs> and it's just so hilarious. And it just, it was, but, but it, oh, it, hit, it hit the sentimental notes, but also like the nostalgic yeah, it's, notes. It's, it's just the stuff. The perfect Christmas movie. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. The specific scenes for adults in there, which are humorous, um, but there's you know the songs are definitely there for children. The chasing of a certain character through a place. Oh my god! Are hilarious and definitely there for the kids. Um, oh, I just loved it so much. And I were watching this and Kevin uh, Bacon. We love Kevin was, Bacon. If you, yeah. if you love Kevin Bacon, it was it just so- hilarious, fantastic, and I mean, it, watch it. What we've talked about when we've talked about um, things that we like around this time of year, which is an adventure story with, with like not great peril in. Yeah, it's exactly that's exactly yeah. it. Um, so yeah, no, that I completely understand that one. Oh, wait, side ha- note, my, ah. sister, my my husband was laughing because um, side note, my um, my husband says that I'm Drax, and so he was laughing his head off because when Drax was doing <laughs> certain things, he was like, "Yep, yeah, that's you." Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't think I'm Drax because you just... I'm trying to think I would have called you a Drax type character <laughs> it's because he's when he's being blunt about a thing because um, okay. I can be quite blunt but so the song that I'm going to mention is a Christmas song and I did not used to like this song when I was younger I, it was one that I thought of as a pill of a song and weirdly, at work yesterday, I was I was talking about this and saying how I never used to like it. And my one of the volunteers who was in um, was also talking about this song and couldn't believe it. And it's "I Believe in Father Christmas" by Greg Lake. I do not know this one. They said there'll be snow at Christmas They said there'll be peace on earth But instead it just kept on raining A veil of tears for the virgin birth And yeah, I did not like this song growing up. I thought that it was... Well, part of me thought that was a bit where it was quite menacing, but now that I am older... And I'm so used to hearing all of the popular songs, the ones that I didn't necessarily navigate towards when I was younger. Now that I'm older, I seem to seek out uh, because I. Do you have Christmas music playing in the shop every um, Christmas? We started this week, so we started with the "Now That's What I Call Christmas" album on Friday, and we have listened to all three of those CDs. I also have a a playlist on my phone which goes on for five hours and 40 minutes, full of Christmas songs. Do you actually then hate all the ones that come up on there? Because I no. used to work, because I, I, I worked in a jewellery shop. 
an interesting fact one um, one year I think it was one of the earlier no it doesn't matter where I went I don't know and then um, yeah and so we only we had one CD and it was a now it was a now that was called Christmas and it would play over and over and over again all, all and it, it was for the whole I think I worked there for the whole of Christmas and I hated Christmas music by the end of that Christmas I love Christmas music now but um this is when I was like 20 or something so it was 20 years ago oh my god um, oh, I, I understand that I'll, I'll simply go uh, mention somebody came into my shop last year or the year before and asked me whether I would mind switching the music off simply because she worked at a card shop. I can't remember which one. And they had been playing Christmas music since September the 1st. Ugh. And she just got sick of it. So I did not mind switching that off. I understood it entirely. My brother hates Christmas music. I get it. I don't mind it. <laughs> Um, I love Christmas music, but I, when I was working, when you're working in a shop, if you're playing Christmas music over and over again, it can kill you. Yeah, and you can always vary it. You can play Christmas carols instead. You can play, um, one year I played Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Oh, that's lovely. But Tchaikovsky has some fantastic music to play at Christmas. Oh, I like that. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Um, my Christmas music relates to a Christmas tradition that we were saying about. Um, and it's when the first, every single, when we put our tree up on the 1st of December, every single year, always the first, always, well, we try to. And so we put our tree up and there's a specific album, the Chris, Michael Bublé Christmas album that we play. And the song I'm going to say that is my, like, like, just always, I think it's the first song in the album, actually. And it's, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas by Michael Bublé. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten It's glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes that glow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas And I just love it so much. It brings me so much joy. And um, it's a very childish song. And yeah, I love it. Yeah. And that's I should have guessed that you would go for that album. That's another one we played in the shop before. I just um, love it. And it's, it's the, yeah. I'm not allowed to play any other Christmas music until that whole album is played whilst we're decorating the tree. We play that, that album and that album only as we put the tree up. Yeah, uh, that's understandable. <laughs> we, we have varied when we've put our tree up over the years. I know that uh, when we used to live in the flat, my parents just left it decorated in a cupboard and just pulled it out fully decorated on the 1st of December or 12th of December, depending on... They'd pull the Christmas tree out in, of this cupboard either on the 1st of December or the 12th of December every year, and then it'd just get pushed back into the cupboard. And it would always, you know, it'd always be done by the time you got in from school. And it wasn't until I got older that I realised that maybe that was where they were hiding the presents. Mm. Oh, suspicious. Yes, suspicious. Um, but let us know how you, when do you guys put your tree up. Let us know if you let us know in the comments when you will be putting your Christmas tree up. Will you be? Well, I've seen that a lot of people already have their trees up, which just blows my mind because nothing in my mind ever says to put up the tree in November. Um, it's only because I'd get bored of it. I have put it up before, I think, in November, but then I wanted to do, like yeah, it makes I, that's... take it down quicker. That's what I mean. I I know somebody who has previously put their tree up in November and then they've taken it down before Christmas because they've got fed up of it. Whereas I'm much more in favour of waiting until the 12th to put it up and then taking it down on 12th night. There's just something about the 12th and the 12th that it was yeah, in. Look, I can cope with the 1st of December. I can cope with that. Because Belle's birthday is the 31st of December, so we always take it down. Actually, she likes leaving up. We normally put it, take it down. The first, actually, because she likes leaving it up for her birthday. I used to take it down for her birthday, before her birthday, and then she used to get upset. But then now we leave it up for her birthday, and then as soon as her birthday's done, that's it. First yeah, of I, January. I, I have to leave it up till the 6th of January. That's just who and I we am. We take it on the first, but that's because, like you said, we put it up early. So. If you've made it this <laughs> let's see some Christmas trees in the comments as well. Which band scored an unlikely Christmas number one in 2009 
fact, thanks to public revolt against the winners of the X Factor? Is it A? I know you'll know the answer as soon as I say yeah, this. Yeah, I do know this one. Go you on. You know it without saying it. Um, name them and I will see. Okay. A, New Model Army. B, Linkin Park. C, Green Day. D, Rage Against the Machine. That one, it's Rage Against the Machine. It was um, the first year when an X Factor winner didn't make it to Christmas number one, and it was Joe McAldry trying to make it. Oh, bless poor Joe McAldry. I know. But to be fair, he did release some very subpar songs. After that? I After that, that, yeah. That was The Climb, wasn't it, who they released? That was The Climb, yeah. yeah. Yeah, still preferred Miley Cyrus. Where, where did the Christmas tree originate from? Bethlehem. Germany. Scotland. Or England. What? Sorry. Where did the Christmas tree originate from? Where did the Christmas tree originate from? Bethlehem, Germany, Scotland, or England? I'm going to say Germany, but I don't because. There we go. <laughs> yes. Uh... But I thought I would have thought it was like a Nordic country. Everyone say below if you would have thought it was a Nordic country. I'm pretty sure that it's something to do with Prince Albert as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, yeah. there was I've got a book upstairs about the original Christmas tree, actually, probably, which yeah, I haven't read. I think that there's something about Prince Albert bringing the tradition over to England, but I can't remember quite well because I haven't got to that chapter yet. I read it every year. <laughs> We've done it. We, we have reached the end of the first instalment of Charlie and Charlie oh, Christmas Cracker. I hope that it was everything that you had wanted it to be and more with our nearly lost my pen there, are jokes. Are... I've got an idea as well. If you actually are here, then you can help us, because help us, because it's really hard finding good Christmas jokes. So if you, in this video, if you write down your favourite Christmas joke, then maybe me and Charlie will go back next week and pick one of those ones. If, I should have asked this at the beginning of the video, because I don't know if anyone's yeah. going to be here by now. But if you are, put your favourite Christmas joke in and we'll make pick it for next week. Or if you really want to surprise us, you could even DM us on one of our other social media, um, whatever you can. Yeah, somewhere else, if you want to send us a message somewhere else so that we could really shock the other Charlie, then feel free to do that as well. Um, but do, you know, we're going for a bit of PG-13 here. We don't want anything too raunchy. I don't yeah. think mine was that bad, was it? No, I, that's why I said PG-13. <laughs> Um, yeah, nothing X-rated, thank you. But yes, I don't, I don't mind the X-rated. <laughs> now I can only imagine what. <laughs> uh, I like the naughty people. jokes. They're the ones that make me laugh. People just send in a pictures of their candy canes and baubles. <laughs> don't say that, Charlie. Do you want that? <laughs> don't put that on the internet. I don't know what you're going, Charlie. You already got that guy, that person, the, the person, the anonymous person who was sending you those messages. You don't know what you're going to get, Charlie. Oh, oh no. goodness gracious me. Um, so anyway, yes, we... Um, we hope that you have enjoyed joining us this week for the first instalment of Charlie and Charlie's Christmas Cracker. We hope that if you were struggling to find a present, then our giveaway helped, that you enjoyed our jokes and hearing what books we um, have chosen for each other and tune in next week to see what we eat of our books, what Charlie made of Ginger and Me and what I make of Wind Volume 2. And yes, join Thank us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. You can see us next Thursday over on Charlie's channel uh, where we will be... This tag. We will be doing a tag video, a nice Yuletide tag for your enjoyment. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this video because until next time, that is all.